After about 10 plus hours of Once Human, I still feel like I've barely scratched the surface. I rate all these games on story, combat, environment and ambiance, graphics and visuals, and overall gameplay. We give an average of a final score based on the overall gameplay, and then a recommendation on whether you should buy or play it now, wait for a deal, or just skip it all together. So Once Human is produced by a company called NetEase, which uh, has a popular title called Naraka Blade Point. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. When I first saw this game, I was healthily skeptical I didn't feel like it was for me but uh, I was ultimately intrigued by the dark thriller setting the various interlacing mechanics and subsystems uh, it really started to look like everything we as an MMO community have been asking for jumbled into one experience so I wanted to give it a try Despite initial difficulties with keybinds, keybind lockouts, which is a big gripe for me, um, a very confusing and less than clear server selection and structure, I ultimately got past it. I, it is a free to play game, which means of course it has a microtransaction model. They have to pay the bill somehow, but it's entirely cosmetic based. In fact, I was pretty excited about the monetization model. And that said, you can absolutely enjoy the game 100% free. I did and have, and I felt absolutely no pressure to buy or pay for anything. So when it comes to story, I had some initial concern about the dialogue that seemed lost in translation. The company has a Chinese origin, but they clearly have very well established globalization teams who can localize and translate languages uh, for the various ports. And it's been fairly well done in the beginning, in the tutorial, particularly, I thought it was a little bit hokey. And I think just given my recent experience with free to play um, JRPG style games, I was a little bit sensitive around that because they just seemed to be really terrible for dialogue. As I continued through the tutorial, I found it got a bit better. It wasn't terribly cringy. The tutorial is well integrated. The um, systems that you unlock very early on through the process comes quickly, so you're not leaving wanting for a lot of mechanics. You are offered multiple dialogue options, but in my experience with it, they all kind of lead to the same place. So it's more of an illusion of choice, but it's still nice to be able to choose how you respond to certain things. After the tutorial itself, I found this, the story actually got better. The writing got a little bit better and it was slowly starting to increase for me, which I was thankful for. As you start to experience these eldritch uh, darkness and, and kind of the, the more thriller based Lovecraftian elements, you know, I actually felt like there were different writers for the tutorial than there was when you ultimately got into the game and started the main story quest or MS cube. I actually started to feel like the confusion that I had starting the game mirrored my character's own confusion so whether or not that was intentional we'll give him a point for that and I really like that as as my character progressed dialogue choices that I had and could make started to take on more of a leadership tone and it was a little less limp like my character is just a peon to be kind of kicked around he was challenging other NPCs the dialogue just felt a little more assertive what I hate in quest based RPGs is feeling like your main character is a peon or an errand boy for these NPCs. Like, I'm a hero, goddammit, treat me like one. So it was nice to see him kind of developing a bit of an edge and calling people out on things, or at least having the option to do so. As the story evolved, you start to discover this arching conspiracy, like super secret government entities, cover-ups, mystery, relationships, and this desperation of humanity just trying to survive in an environment that's being overrun by this looming darkness. Uh, and after about two, three hours, I completely 180'd on the story. I really started to enjoy it. All of the side quests and the tangential quests really blend in to support the main narrative, but you don't have to go down those paths if you don't want to. I really liked how in-game exploration contributes to the narrative, so little lore items that you find around the world, people that you experience and talk to, and other supernatural experiences you have really start to fill in the story. And what I really enjoyed about those lore items is they're short, they're quick, they're a couple of lines of text. I love when developers put the effort into in-game lore items. I hate having to read a whole ass other book to try and understand how they fit in. Every quest seems to have a purpose and where it belongs in the storied world. In the game, the tasks represent your quest lines and your sub quest lines, including the MSQ. And then there's an entire journey system, which is kind of like an interactive objective based guide that helps you learn the systems, learn the game through their own kind of sub quests that come complete with their rewards. That helps eliminate that whole like too many options or what do I do in the sandbox world that leads to boredom and some people walking away from sandbox altogether. What I'm currently 
going into 10 plus hours, the story is becoming more and more engaging and I'm actually really excited to continue to see where it goes from here. But because of the jank in the beginning and I need to rate it on what I experienced now, not where I think it can go, I'm gonna give it a three out of five for story, but it has potential. All right, moving on to combat. It has active combat in the game. I really like the way it flows. It's very much like The Division, if you're familiar with it. Uh, and I loved the combat in The Division when it came out. Gunplay, over the shoulder, third party, it's great. The weight and dimensions of your character actually has tangible effects in game, like how much you can carry or how quick and nimble you are. There is definitely a stealth play angle that you can feed into if you're so inclined. Lots of options for how to equip and hone your character to deal with different situations. There's a huge variety of gear, weapons, buffs, food, stims, mods, custom setups, crafted materials and goods come into play. I don't think I've ever seen a fish meta in a game before. The movement is very natural and there are some pretty cool components to that as well, including vehicle play. And a subtlety that I really liked is there's some natural lead time to switching equipment and weapons, which introduces a little bit of strategic thinking. You can't just click a button and immediately have a different weapon. Um, you have to plan out your timing when you're in combat and that can actually uh, mean the difference between success or failure. The combat and combat encounters are definitely challenging. Uh, mobs are tuned well, not over the top, but definitely not a cakewalk. I did so much questing and leveling because I was enjoying it that I basically out leveled everything that I was up against until I just started focusing on the main story quest. The AI in the game is very fluid with dynamic choices. Different factions use different strategies. They're not completely stupid, although sometimes they do some questionable like token AI things. They work together and they'll come after you. So uh, it was very refreshing. There are ranged weapons, melee weapons, and tactical items, all of which feel good to use and a combination of both is required to get the desired effects and whether it's grenades or plastic explosives or deployable machinery um, really give you the ability to set up your own combat scenario depending on what you're facing in addition to that the deviation or pet system which we'll come to again is really well integrated one of the pet types is combat pets so that adds a whole other avenue of things to consider when you're fighting effectively combat deviations give you an ultimate if you want to think about it that way. Something you can deploy once in a while, then it requires a small recharge. To go even further, you play the game primarily third person or over the shoulder, but you can switch between first person. First person's really more for aiming or engagements at distance, as opposed to like a game mode. It would be difficult to play it in first person all the time. But in order to be truly effective in combat, you have to master switching between third person and first person when it's needed, as well as switching shoulders for clearing corners, entering rooms, things like that. The monsters, the alien creatures, or deviants as they're called in this game, they can range from the weird and strange to completely terrifying, to the supernatural ghost-like, to alien creations. You have your variety of dumb, ambling zombies and brutal, aggressive monsters. The human factions are clever and tactical and the wildlife threats even have their own hazards like crocs beneath the surface of a flooded town. With POIs, dungeons, instances, uh, seasonal events all happening on top of one another wrapped in a sandbox especially for a survival type game which it truly is at its core one of my biggest gripes about survival games is that while the building and stuff is cool there's just not enough to do in the world and to my experience so far, Once Human doesn't have that problem. I love the loot system, the reward system from combat. The gear and the items are worth crafting. Some of the best stuff in the game, at least the early game in the time that I played, will come from player craft. While the best loot are the materials, the blueprints, and the capabilities to build those items which means you have an actual influence to the final output of what loot you get. So it's not just kind of like you loot the item, you get that item, it's good, it's bad, you want it, you don't. You get the stuff to make the types of items that you want. So it gives you a lot more agency on like what your final prize is. Boss fights are really dangerous, stakes are really high, uh, part of special events that happen in the world. There are lots of things you can get into that have more epic scaled up encounters. Uh, there's suspense, there's danger in it. All of it contributes to the world's story and the feel of this darkness, this helplessness, everything that you do in the game starts to feel important to what's happening in the game world and I had no trouble finding a group or people around to help out with uh, multiplayer dungeons or world events as they were happening. All right combat was great very deep multi-layered tons of stuff to do um, four out of five I liked it a lot. Moving into environment and ambiance, like I said, it definitely has a very strong Stranger Things vibe, which really has its roots in Lovecraftian uh, supernatural eldritch horror themes. 
Uh, and like I said, the secret world, those of you of a <clears throat> particular vintage might remember. And these influences are okay with me. I love them actually. Nothing, nothing went so far as I would call it a copycat. It just really took from these tones and made a fresh experience. There were seamless transitions between instances, between tutorials and sequences into the gaming environment. So uh, that makes things like jump scares and just the creep factor a lot more effective. If you have to go in with an open mind and just be and be willing to be freaked out, you know? Like it's it's something in a game that you have to do yourself to, to really experience that darkness, the suspense and the, the thrill of it. And things in the game can go from like your basic task that you're carrying out to a completely twisted, mind-bending, um, supernatural experience in the blink of an eye. Yeah, it definitely has that haunting, creepy effect of Resident Evil in some of its best forms. The food and sustenance segment of that I thought is really well done too where it provides buffs to you sometimes these things can be just a nuisance just something you got to do which is nagging at you in once human it's more buff centric so it's like if you want to have the most buffs or have your character perform at their peak potential then you have to make sure that they're sustained and that their health is good but if you let that slide a little bit, it's not gonna prevent you from doing what you're doing entirely. You never want like these blinking lights and blips at the bottom to like interrupt and ruin your gameplay experience. The music is great. It's really well-timed entering and exiting to either make you feel comfortable, falsely. The dynamic weather is really nice when the rain comes and goes. The day-night cycle really adds to that eerie, creepy feeling depending on what you're about to engage in. And I think they do a really good job of balancing all that with this really beautiful, sprawling wilderness scenery that really makes those dark, suspenseful moments even more amplified. And it has a huge map with tons of POIs, dynamic events, interesting locations, lots of stuff to explore. And I really wanted to do everything regardless of level. And I will go back and probably complete these maps, which is not something I typically do. I guess to that end, this is a completionist stream or maybe nightmare, I don't know. <laughs> the vehicle system is really nice. It kind of feels at times like driving in GTA. I think it's really well integrated. Lots of cool customizations that you can invest into if you want uh, better vehicles or different vehicles to traverse the landscape, but they do make traveling the map and exploring that much better. And I wasn't expecting it from the game, honestly. Probably my favorite part of that is the beginner vehicle is a sweet motorbike. Like they don't start you out with some crappy jalopy and you have to to like crawl your way up to something good like they're, we're gonna give you a motorbike to begin with and that's really nice too because why can't we have nice things there's still lots of room to progress it doesn't mean we have to start with like a tricycle give us cool stuff one of the most important tools for experiencing the environment around you in person is the scan or spatial theater which basically highlights interesting things within a 25 meter radius including items that uh, that you might be interested in or things to interact with Beyond that, the spatial theater can also show player ghosts, like in Soulsborne type games, where they can show you paths that they've taken and offer hints to other players that way, as well as story-based ghosts or phantasms that uh, can contribute to the tasks that you're in or the story you're chasing. I know the building system is a bit of a contentious uh, topic in the community right now, but I actually really enjoyed it. I put hours into it. There are plenty of options to customize, upgrade. There is a really wonderful builder community in Once Human. Check out the Discord and see some of those submissions. They are just mind-blowing. I imagine that that probably changes on PvP servers where buildings and structures tend to be strictly functional. In the beginner zones where they tutorialize building and creating your own space, like all those little plots start to look the same. You know, a basic block, a couple of crafting stations and an isolation chamber for your deviations. Um, literally, it's like a whole network of just noob platforms so that can be a little bit immersion breaking but i don't know any way around that and honestly once you're out of those beginner zones you never really see that much again there were some light performance issues i think because of all this stuff and the customization and the player influence on the world i definitely had some stuttering some lag issues and it looked to be server lag i also ran into a couple of cases of false rendering or buildings where the entrances would be blocked by just like a gray wall uh, because it hadn't rendered properly or the floors didn't render so my character would fall through into this like dirt basement but it was minimal honestly i i would say very infrequent in my you know dozen or so hours but i'm gonna give it a pass on that the music the lighting the feel the sense the scope how things interact in the environment itself gave it a score of four out of five 
All right, a close kin to environment and ambiance is graphics and visuals. I really did like the look, tone, and feel. It was fresh, unique. Uh, character creation off the bat was really good. There's a lot of sliders, which I always like to see. You can spend a good hour or two just making a character. If you want to make it look like yourself or something completely different, you have got lots of tools to do that. It gives you good agency over your character, which creates attachment to the character you play. The visual tone is CG realistic. Uh, with that dark brooding current I mentioned everything looks a little worn a little desperate and dirty in this post-apocalyptic uh, kind of tried strung out existence uh, you can see that things are just kind of slapped together there's a very makeshift feel like a Mad Max vibe to all the buildings and structures and how people are living in this eldritch touched wasteland you can see that there's a history of decay and despair in the asylums that humanity has kind of created in this post-apocalyptic world. Things are just hanging by a thread. You see the seeping into the buildings, into the textures, into the furnishings that are rusted, decayed, which creates a great contrast in areas where the structure is a little bit better preserved, or you have brick buildings that are in good repair but otherwise abandoned. The lighting is really well used. It's sunny and bright to musty and shadow soaked. That lighting also has a distinct function where if you're looking into a dark setting from a bright setting, it affects visibility, um, which adds a strategic tactical element. So you have to use light to your advantage, including your player flashlight, when to use it, when not to use it, because it will be noticed. The models and skins, the creative fashioning of everything in the world is really clever and unique. Uh, sometimes it's just downright bizarre, but they've given themselves creative license in the building of the narrative world. It's just like weird and beautiful sometimes. And sometimes just weird in a good way. In the gameplay world, the animations look really good. They're fluid and natural, but when you are up close or in a dialogue scene with NPCs, that's where things start to get a little bit um, suspect. <laughs> Up close, NPCs are kind of lacking that fluidity. They seem really stiff and robotic. Um, the mouths don't always move, which is a little offsetting. The main character is not voiced at all, and their mouth doesn't move, but their body does. So uh, that's kind of like, that's where the visual movement and the animations kind of lost me a little bit. But at least your gear looks cool. <laughs> There are a few spelling errors in the UI menus and some places where in the English port, let's say there's still Chinese characters. Um, but I think those are things that they're actively working through. In fact, it, by the time that I recorded this, most of the early ones in the tutorial menus have been fixed. So they're aware, I'm sure. I should note that my visuals are tuned down for performance. I sit probably around the mid-low, strictly from a performance perspective, um, but that's the experience I have to rate it on. So for that, I gave graphics and visuals a score of three out of five, which is tough for me because again, it's it has potential to be higher, but early stakes, I guess. All right, and for overall gameplay, um, eventually getting past the key binding lockout, which I really hate. I was able to solve that with Microsoft Power Toys, by the way, just to um, rebind my keys, but that's probably another video. Uh, and the server selection was a little unintuitive, but again, once you're through it, it's a one-time thing. The connectivity, the performance, and just the little growing pains, we'll say, of a new, very ambitious MMO. It just sucks that these are part of like the first impressions that a player is going to have, and they're so limited and short that hopefully most people will get past that. Uh, I have to mention the customer experience, which I wouldn't do normally in a for a game, but it, because it's a live service game, that is an important avenue. And I found the customer experience really good. And I found that this team has been really responsive and they're actively seeking feedback and they're there and you feel like they're they're actually there and they're just not just passing it off to a help desk, never to be seen or heard of again. They are actively correcting, patching, upgrading, changing things based on that community feedback in near real time, which honestly, I don't think I've seen before, at least not well. I mean, I've seen the promise of that. Tutorials are inline and unobtrusive. They feel pretty natural walking you through the game early on, so you're not constantly getting pop-ups the whole way through. Uh, the gameplay itself and camera work is really smooth. Uh, it can occasionally be janky due to the server lag, which I mentioned, but I did find that a little infrequent. Now, I need to really see how that plays out on a high population server with a lot of players and clients in real time. TBD. 
Uh, but I'm genuinely excited for new towns, points of interest, exploring new map areas. Uh, and I didn't care about level. I just, I wanted to be there. I wanted to go explore and experience these things. And I didn't think about leveling, which is a really good sign in an MMO because you inevitably get to that point where you're just looking for the next ding, you know, and you're racing through it. And I didn't feel that push at all. Further to that, I genuinely do want to see and experience everything this game has to offer. Explore those new unique areas, experience all the jump scares, the little side stories and the supernatural. It's just the sheer depth and interlacing of all these systems and mechanics. It'll give me stuff to delve into for hours and hours and hours to come. I really think you have to experience that yourself, but that goes for story, the combat, gear and loot and how it's handled, and the player crafting component, abilities, mods, the pet system, uh, building, survival, crafting your own space in the world. Uh, it's like they took the best cues from The Division, Resident Evil, Dark Souls, Rust and DayZ, Grand Theft Auto, and probably more that I can't remember off the top of my head. I really do get the sense that they want to create the best game possible, but I've been burned before. I think they're doing it very well so far. I think it's a great game and an MMO experience with lots of promise, but I have to rate it on today, not the promise. That's what Star Citizen is for. So for overall gameplay, I gave it a hopeful and very optimistic 3 out of 5. I know it will grow from that if they stay the course. In conclusion, it all sounds a bit perfect. I am healthily skeptical, and it's just too early to really get super excited in the interest of protecting my own sanity, but I'm rooting for them. At least uh, I think this could be a 4 out of 5 as long as they stay the course and continue to improve and don't drop the ball on that or walk away from it. I'm 10 hours in and I'm still excited to play. I've barely scratched the surface. The team's attentive, listening. They do seem to be doing all the right things so far and they're doing it for free on top of it. So um, I've given it a final score of three out of five. I will continue to play it. I definitely think it's a play or buy now. Again, especially because it's free, you will immediately make your money back and it's well worth your time just to experience how these things come together, even to see the potential the game has. I see this being part of my regular gaming lineup. So uh, there may be more once human content coming for me too. If you like the review, if you agree or disagree, let me know by all means, throw me a like, please subscribe to the channel. Totally free to you. It means a lot to me and helps a lot. Uh, if you are a busy gamer like myself with very little time to know life a game, but still really enjoy that precious game time. All right, that's it. Don't work too hard. See you later.